Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Life Talk Burrito. I think you might know us, Shreyas Koshik and Michelle Gunn. Shreyas, you want to fill them in and what we're all about? Absolutely. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our pilot episode of Life Talk Burrito, where we talk everything and anything about life. We'll have some interesting guests who bring in very much uh, appreciated humor, some bring in their seriousness, and it will be fun to talk about life in general. So, Michelle, what was the inspiration behind doing this kind of talk show? Did we get bored about coaching already? Or is it just that we wanted to have some fun and just spread it across with our community? So what, what was your line of thought behind accepting my proposal to do Life Talk Burrito? Well, I don't think either one of us could ever get tired of talking about coaching. So we know that's not it. But I think that uh, we enjoy our partnership so much. We just wanted to delve in and involve more people and talk about more things because you and I have so much to talk about. Um, we need people to listen and to join in the conversation that this would be a great idea. How did you come up with the idea? Uh, as you rightly pointed out, even I'm not bored at all to talk about coaching. Uh, this idea just came uh, at the spur of a moment where I thought uh, it would be better to limit coaching to our podcast and bring in some flavor, just uh, listen to people, their experiences, and learn from them and just start 2021 on the right note. And uh, with that, would you like to introduce our first guest for the show? Well, I would be honored. So some of you might know who this young man is. He is very popular. He's got a popular show on LinkedIn, Elevated Shorts. I think both Shreyas and I have been blessed to be able to appear on his show. Let's welcome Andrew Lopez. Hi, Andrew. Hey, hey, what's going on, you two? First of all, love what you got going on. You know, I'm so excited to be here. I can't thank you enough. I appreciate your enthusiasm, your time, and your trust in me already. And this is awesome. Love the name. As I was joking with you earlier, I think Chipotle Mexican Grill needs to sponsor your show. Here we go, because that's, uh, I love it. I love the touch, love the name. You know, for me being out here in Southern California, Mexican food is everything out here. So, bravo to you both. Well, I just have to Thank say you. that uh, Shreyas gets the credit because I was very hesitant on the name. <laughs> So he is the mastermind behind it. So all kudos and the first free burritos go to Shreyas. Thank you. And uh, yeah, we have an interesting connection. I never knew, Andrew, you had uh, some Mexican connection as well. So the show is not Mexican, but uh, we really appreciate if some of uh, the word gets, you know, crossed to Chipotle and they do sponsor us, it would be really great. And we have our uh, viewers joining in, Joe, Judith, uh, Shailendra. Thank you all for joining us. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, please do drop it down in the comments. So Andrew, first and foremost, who are you and what do you do? Who am I? Ah, Andrew Lopez. I'm a 28 year old out here in Costa Mesa, California, good old Orange County. Um, good question, man. You know, I, as we'll get into this, but just embracing the power of reinvention, you know, I've really just become an online extrovert, as I like to call myself. You know, I'm extroverted all the time, but being an extrovert online has kind of been this transition to what we do. So I help people do a couple things. You know, I help people better engage on LinkedIn, you know, our favorite website as we've all come to connect on. And, you know, I'm, I do that through the power of video. You know, video to me is a vessel. Video is a conversation starter, and it should be one of the best ways to connect with each other across the world, across the country. Yeah, I mainly just help people with that. You know, I have I have my couple little shows. You know, some of you might know me from Reinventional Daily, and uh, now Elevated Conversations. It's kind of the same thing, just getting people to talk and, and starting a conversation every day on, on LinkedIn. So, yeah, I help people in those ways and. I love every bit of it. You know, it fits the name. My company name is Elevated Shorts, and it's just short videos that elevate your business and yourself. So it all still aligns, and it's a uh, 
it's been fun. It's been a good year and a half so far as a business owner. And, you know, yeah, there's been a couple punches in the face in a lot of different ways of just learning how to be a business owner and navigating everything. But it's the greatest decision I've ever made. And I am so proud of myself for actually making the jump and doing that back in September last year. So that's me. Yeah. Online extrovert, LinkedIn engager, um, you know, show host, whatever you want to call me. But uh, I love every bit of it. Awesome. So from what I hear you say, you're into uh, creating small ad films for businesses and helping them with their marketing. Is that what you do? Yeah. I mean, I use video again as the vessel. I think video is one of the best ways to communicate and share who we are with the outside world. You know, I'm a writer. I went to school for journalism. So I, I, I believe in writing as well. But with where we are all at, having you know, our physical worlds shrunken all over the world, but our virtual worlds have 10x or 20x or whatever you want to, how big you want to say it is. And I think one of the best ways we connect just like this, we're doing video here, we're chatting all together, as you've seen with reinvention daily and you know elevated conversations it's all about sharing that that conversation or that that nugget or that takeaway and i just think video is the best way to do that so it's not even necessarily just advertisements it's just getting people to express you know getting people to express who they are you know because the one thing i've noticed on linkedin is that there's more people that are listening paying attention and seeking to be understood more than ever and again, it goes back to just people are more willing to put themselves out there. And what better way than, than just doing it through video, just like this. So everything you've seen me do with the shows and the couple videos that I put out of myself, it's just me expressing. It's me putting myself out there. And it's it's still new, I'll be honest. You know, I wasn't this expressive. You asked me a year ago, I'm energetic. You know, I talk with my hands. I, I have my one-liners, but I did not have the confidence or the believe in myself to be expressive and share. So it's just that, that whole switch of just helping small business owners or just everyday people express better on a platform like LinkedIn. So it's uh, the, my famous phrase, as I like to say all the time, is just don't be afraid to press play, you know, like we're doing right now. We're pressing play and letting it kind of run. So some of the greatest things happen when you just press play and share. Absolutely. So what... What exactly was the biggest challenge you had from the pandemic? So we know you were into video beforehand and you kind of transitioned, but what was your biggest challenge because of the pandemic? <sighs> I love that question, Michelle. And I think after thinking about it, the biggest challenge, I mean, the obvious challenge is having to figure out what to do. You know, out here in California, it was March 9th for us and we had to shut everything down. You know, me being a videographer first, I had to put the lights, the cameras, the lavalier microphones, all the goodies into the closet and it's still sitting right over there. Um, but for me, I'll say the biggest challenge in all honesty, as crazy as it might sound, is facing myself. You know, I started the business in September of 2019 and... You know, I had some good ideas. I didn't go to film school. You know, I, I had a passion for video, passion for journalism, and I was doing some things on the side working for an IT company. And I kind of was just like leading with with video and capturing those same stories and capturing those moments. And you have know, that identity crisis, that, that imposter syndrome, like who am I, you know, not some kid who went to film school or never worked on a Hollywood set trying to handle a camera and, and get people to express. But it was that it was that in March, you know, starting the show in April and kind of all of us across the world having that March and April, like, what do I do? I've watched enough Hulu, I've watched enough Netflix, I've watched enough YouTube, like, where do we kind of, but during that time, I had to meet myself where I was at. You know, I was going through some personal things, we all were kind of going through things, and I just took this time, and especially to this day, I've taken the last nine months as, as a challenge to meet myself where I'm at. And I think it's a challenge that all of us have been faced with. And in finding that, you know, the greatest gift that I've given myself and, and my good friend, Arch Fuston out here, you know, he's an emotional leadership coach in San Diego. And I was a part of his um, human better course for about 15 weeks. And one of the greatest gifts I've given myself is the gift of self-forgiveness. And I think grasping that starting in about April, May, and, and, and forgiving myself and giving myself the confidence. So it, it might be an interesting answer, but but that was the challenge in all honesty that, that faced me. It was like, yeah, I have to adapt, I have to reinvent, I have to pivot a couple of things with the business, but I had to come to terms with myself and kind of do that because again, it's, it's everything that I've, I've had to do and we've all had to do 
has come from within. It's come from me looking myself in the mirror and saying, you know, Andrew, like, you got to put yourself out there, man. You got to deal with whatever it was. You got to deal with these stresses, these anxieties. You got to face it head on and persevere. So if that answers the question, Michelle, but yeah, it, it's been, that was the biggest challenge. And it's something that I have a way better grasp on to this day. But going through that the last, you know, eight, nine months was, uh, was something that I really, really had to, to battle, but also had to overcome. Yeah. Um, so some things very clearly stand out from what you just said. One was to reinvent yourself and find out how you'd be able to continue your passion. And second was the fact that you never attended film school, but your passion is into making these short films for businesses, which in turn helps them grow. So this is, I think, uh, you know, really inspiring and for people to understand that no matter how hard 2020 was, there were some silver linings. So what was your silver lining? What was the biggest lesson that you learned the past eight months? Oof. Biggest lesson. I mean, I think I could I could send that back to the previous question, but also reinvention. You know, as you both know me, as most people would know me with the squares and everything with reinvention daily, you know, that was that was a hobby. That was something me twiddling my thumbs mid-April, kind of like, what the hell do I do as we move forward? You know, all of us were in that same kind of thing. And I was on I was on a call with my friend Leilani, Leilani Kire. And uh, she's an HR professional here in Orange County. And she said the word reinvention on a call that we were on. And it just, it hit me when she said that. And Leia's, you know, she's a good friend of mine. And, but she said that in regards to her HR business. So I remember calling her, you know, that afternoon. I'm like, Leia, you said something pretty powerful. Like, can we explore that? And I had a couple shows in the past um, that I was doing interview shows that were similar style. They were in person, not on Zoom. And I just kind of said, you know, Leilani, I'm going through this reinvention too. Like the way that you said that, like your business and, and your personal life and kind of the same thing with me, like I want to run with that. So on April 22nd, um, Wednesday, I just, I met with Lay on Zoom and I said, hey girl, like I'm going to ask you this question and we're just going to go with it. So since April 22nd, it was just capturing reinvention daily and that was the birth of the show. And it's everything that you both have seen the last, you know, seven months, but going off that that phrase i think it was realizing that there's so many other people out there that had to reinvent or had to pivot or whatever word you want to use obviously i use reinvention because of everything i was going through but it was that motivation it was that starting with leilani and and talking to antoinette second and talking to you know lee third and and going into having people from all over the world it, it was that motivation realizing that like there's people across this globe. It's not just the California thing. It's not just people here in Orange County, like, oh, we're, we're tripping out, what's going on? Like, it was a global thing. So it hit me instantly and it's like, there are people that can share this same story and share this same vulnerability of having to reinvent. So it, it, it fired me up every day and it just kind of turned into a show that I put seasons on. I mean, I just thought, I thought it would run its course for a couple of weeks and be like, oh, Andrew, this is great. You know, got some connections out of it. And it turned into this, global thing and, and partnering with Mary and having me in Europe and it's just it makes me it, it, it makes me emotional sometimes thinking about it in all honesty because it's like who would have thought that pressing play on something so simple would would go so far so it, it just it's moved me every day it's taught me that I can reinvent myself at any time just like we all can and it taught me that you know it, yeah I mean, I, I'm like getting caught on my words because of it, because it, it's it's moved me so much and it's transformed me. It's like, I, I made a video about this, but basically it's like, you know, I reinvented the show and reinvented the business, started the show. And then at the end of the summer, you know, summer for us in, in Southern California ended like two weeks ago in November. And it's, it's now that like elevated shorts, my business of me and, you know, it's now looked me back in the eyeballs and it's reinvented Andrew Lopez. So Andrew Lopez reinvents the business and then goes through this journey. And then now Andrew Lopez is reinvented again because of elevated shorts. Like it, it's just, it's blown me away. And the impact that that can have on yourself, I think is you can't put a dollar amount on that. You can't put a real value on that because it's, it's priceless and it's, it's taking that motivation every day. So no matter what I do, whether it's, Elevated conversations or reimagine daily again in the future, whatever it is, I just know now that I have the motivation to to do that. So it's 
again, it's 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 so moving. It's it's leveled me on so many levels. I I absolutely love hearing about your journey because I know that a lot of the episodes that I watch touch me in some way, and I can also relate to them because of everything we're going through. Um, as a people worldwide, we're really going through a lot of the same things. And sometimes we can just get so much from hearing somebody else talk about their story. And it's so amazing because a lot of times people focus on where do I need to go? What's the end result? When the journey there is really what moves us, what changes us, and what will guide our direction sometimes to a whole new course even that's better than what we had originally projected. And I think that's what I'm hearing from you and you talking about it, how you had this vision from a conversation and this whole journey kind of kind of reshaped you in the way you think and do things. And that's so amazing. So given where you were before the pandemic, how the pandemic has changed you. I know before we went live, the three of us were talking, we're all in agreement that although there is some um, terrible things that are happening because of the pandemic, it also has provided a lot of people with opportunities and us three do agree that we have experienced that. Where is that going to move you for 2021? Is there certain plans you might have? Did this experience change what viewpoint you have for the new year? Oh man, you know, 2021 is going to be interesting. It's funny because like I say this sometimes and it's, I don't look at things from January to December. I look at things from May 17 to May 17. I look at a year of Andrew. So it's, it's interesting with my birthday being in May and like looking at halfway, it's like, if you look at 2020, 2020 was, was, was it's been nuts, right? It, it's been, it's been crazy in so many different ways. But if I look at 28 from May to now, like I was like two weeks into reinvention daily. When I, when I started or when I turned 28 and like, you know, I kind of reinvented daily was kind of like, Hey, this is 28. So it's like, if you look at the last six months of what I've been able to do, it's been 28. It's been amazing. It's been the greatest year. Yeah. There's been financial stress and yeah, there's been hardships and this and this and that, but individually it is 28 is the magic number. And I thought 27 was the magic number last year before all of this happened. But, but looking into the new year, of 2021. I'm fascinated by New Year's for the reason that we can all be from different cultures, different beliefs, whatever it is, but everybody across the globe, 7 billion people recognize the changing of the calendar. Like I'm fascinated by that. So all of us are hoping for something awesome in 21. But I think from the business standpoint, you know, I used to, being an extrovert, as, as you both have known me, and, you know, I used to fight for people in my own backyard, you know, being a member of a local club here and and trying to be the, the kid with the camera and shaking hands and passing out business cards. It was like, you're fighting for people in like business in your own backyard. But the difference now is like, that's not the case anymore. Like you could go anywhere. I joke, you know, my friend Cheryl Harris, she made the joke on a video we captured and she said, you know, she travels the world from her bedroom or from her office every day, you know, travels across the country with meetings, you know, across and then, you know, talking i'm traveling across the country and the world at the same time right now from my bedroom in california so it's like i've been so moved even though i love the in-person connection and i can't wait to be able to go back to a networking event and shake hands and embrace and and have that energy but at the same time you know to have these connections and work with people all over the world it's like i never would have had that i never would have thought that again to, to work to, to chat with you michelle out in texas and to chat with you Therese, out in india and to have you know, we mentioned Europe with Mary, like, to, to, and, and to have these conversations with people that I haven't even got to shake hands with yet. It, it is just, it's baffled me. So I think 2021 is the year of continuing to embrace the uh, the virtual. A lot of us have come to really feel that now, but I also think it's, it's the year of expression. I think a lot of people got stuff to say, good or bad, but it's the year that people are willing to actually say, you know what, I'm willing to share and put myself out there. So that's what I'm looking forward to. You know, obviously we want to get back to normal. We want to get back to restaurants. We want to get back to just living life to what we knew it before March 9th. But I just want people to just 
be able to express just like this. No matter who it is, it's one of the you know the biggest things that I always want to share with people is like just put yourself out there. And I think that's that's what I'm feeling for this new year. Um, you know, I got some other little plans just with elevated conversations and and some other things, but but that's kind of the thing is just to keep motivating people to express and and say that you could do with PayPal, LinkedIn, and Zoom. I mean, you could work anybody in the world, and it's a beautiful thing. Absolutely, those are some great valid points. And one thing that resonates with me very well is um, the openness that people across the world have shown towards virtual meetings, getting on shows like this, uh, embracing LinkedIn Live, going on YouTube, Instagram, probably even Twitter through Periscope. You know, people have started embracing themselves, and they are now more willing to get on the camera and start interacting with people because I know for sure my face lights up whenever I get a request from someone who wants to have a brief chat. And I do the same. Now I'm more open to meeting new people. Uh, and probably if I hadn't been so open, we wouldn't be sitting right here. Uh, me and Michelle wouldn't have even known each other. And you, Andrew, we wouldn't have uh, known about your passions, about elevated shops, and also about reinvention. So when I hear your story, uh, it seems that you've done some proper groundwork, which uh, you know on the outset seems that you've made seamless transition. But as we all know, it is not as seamless. There, there are always problems, but we had that right mindset to overcome them and not see them as obstacles, but a stepping stone. So if at all there is one instance that you'd like to pick and would want to change the way you approached it in 2021, what would that be? That's a good one because it's it's hard. You know, I feel slightly enlightened at 28 years old. It's funny, you know, like with all these changes and being able to do that. I, I think it's, how would I change? Um, it's hard because in the moment, I'll be honest, I don't know if there's anything I would change because I've changed so much. And I, I know that embracing change or embracing reinvention or embracing just what comes at us every day is kind of the, um, I, I think it's more just a challenge for people. I'll say one of the greatest things, and I love talking about this, and, and Mr. Rob Sharkey, uh, you know, he has changed my life with the phrase of the ground floor. He's become a father figure to me and, and a hero to me in so many ways with this. And I, I think it's just, Looking back, that's what Reimagine Daily was. It was a ground floor show. It was getting 120 people across the world to say, this is me giving myself and sharing with the world. Elevated Conversations now is just the spinoff. It's the continuous that you'll see. It's the same thing. It's that ground floor. This is me. This is the conversation. The greatest question I've ever asked people, I've come to realize, is the magic question. What's the conversation that you want to start? You know, I think that is one of the greatest things that we can do. You know, Reimagine Daily, six seasons. I changed that second question at season four. And when you look at season four, five, and six, and you look at Reinvention Europe with Mary, her season one, that question gets everything started. Like, reinvention is powerful. Reinvention is not a trend. That was my one fear starting the show. I thought, oh, reinvention, it's just, it's something that's going to be here through COVID and then it's going to go away. Like, no, reinvention happens every day was here well before COVID. It's, it'll be here forever. It's something that can always happen. And I think that was the kind of the mindset that changed for me is I, I thought it was a trend. But going back to that second question and, and what I lead with now, it's 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 just, it's, it's so, such a basic question. It's so simple, but it's one of the most powerful questions you can ask someone because it's it's inviting someone to basically say, this is what I want to share with the world. This is what I want to say. This is what I want to start. And so I know it doesn't answer the question around change, but I, I think it's just continuing to do that, continuing to always start from that ground floor and, and, and lead from there. I now know going for the rest of my life, no matter what happens, no matter what amount of money I can make or no matter the travels I can do, I always need to check myself and remember to go back to that ground floor. All the relationships, friends, or just family even. I mean, I had some powerful moments with my own mother, 
you know, and just with the ground floor and just how it's changed the dynamic of, of how I communicate with my family and, and my closest friends and people that I meet across the world. You know, I think it's, it's something that I really hope people continue to do or start to do if they haven't already. Yeah, I agree. I, I, this pandemic has really, well, we're, since it's been almost all of 2020, has really given us an opportunity to look at things differently, personally, professionally. We're all learning new skills, or a lot of us are, learning new skills that we haven't utilized and finding out how wonderful they are. Um, the opportunity to network, get to know people, collaborate around the world. You always heard people say, boy, I wish I could buy locate. Well, I feel like we're doing that right here today, right? We're kind of in more than one, one spot at a time. And um, just really people starting to, to remember how to appreciate people because we've really, it's been take the personal touch, the connections on an intimate level have been taken away from us in many cases. So we really have to look at new ways to have those intimate conversations through video um, and not having as much in-person contact is really affecting a lot of people and really valuing what we have that's been before us this whole time that we've taken for granted. So I'm hoping that well, praying that the world will change and that change will remain, that people will value people because we're people. Oh, absolutely. I agree 100%. I think, you know, that it's, it's funny. I've, I've gotten on Zoom with people and right off the bat, they're like, Andrew, it's funny how expressive you are. Like, it's interesting. Like, I wouldn't have think from your videos that you're so expressive. And I'm like, well, I'm not the host, so I'm not supposed to say that. <laughs> but two, it's like, I just, you know, and that's been the thing, as I was alluding to earlier, is like, I've been just, I've led with expression. It's not like every single person I hop on Zoom with, I'm pouring out my problems, or I'm standing in line at Target, and I'm like, hey, this is how I'm feeling today. Like, it's just having that ability to just share who you are. I kind of just give people who I am right off the bat. If it's a new, mm -hmm. you know, a, a new connection or a new conversation I'm having with someone, um, you know, having elevated conversations and having the ability to just capture that and post that. I mean, I think it's just, it's leading with that expression, but that's been the, one of the biggest lessons for me is just being able to be expressive, open and, and willingness to, to be vulnerable. You know, I think vulnerability has been a dear friend to me <laughs> over the last nine months and I've embraced it with open arms. And I think it's one of those things where, if you just let it happen, no feeling has to be final. And I think that was another big life lesson, like, oh, I'm feeling this way, so I'm gonna feel this way for a long time. Like, mm -hmm. no, it's, it's, it's embracing how we feel, joy, sadness, pain, any emotion, it's just, we need to be able to receive that and feel that, and it's okay to feel, it's okay to be sad, it's okay to be happy, it's okay to be, feel accomplished. You know, I've patted myself on the back a few times thinking it was weird in the beginning, but no, you know, I. <laughs> accomplish some cool stuff, you know, from my bedroom. And it's cool, you know, it's it, it's a power. Impact is the new sexy. I think it's literally just, it's the ones who have the impact. And I think that's the difference. It's impact that can transform anything now. And I think that's what we're kind of all seeing is the ones who have the impact. And that, that that's what Reimage and Daily, Reimage in Europe, and everything has done to me. It's like had this impact on me again, back at me like oh my gosh we've moved this many people across the world and i never would have thought that i would have had a chance to do that so it's again uh it's it's a beautiful thing and i think it's just leading with that expression leading with that just conversation that we want to share it's one of the greatest things we can do very true so what uh, really resonates with me as well is now we are making an attempt to acknowledge our emotions it might be joy, sad, happiness, love, whatever it is. So we are making that effort to start acknowledging our own self and allowing us, giving ourselves permission to feel what we feel on a regular basis. Now even the meetings have gotten interesting where 
your you allow pets to come in and probably zoom bomb your meetings so people are not taking it too seriously so there is the shift going on right now as we have started embracing this online culture and the biggest advantage for me is to sit here in the comforts of my home and meet people as far as the united states you guys are uh, michel is about 10 and a half hours behind me you are 13 and a half hours behind me but we are getting an opportunity to meet and share uh, our experiences and learn from them constantly improve adopt what we feel can fit in our business so with keeping all this in mind that what is andrew lopez's legacy for 2020 and for 2021 man that's my questions i never thought i would answer that's a good one if i leave anything in 2020 you know there's a lot <clears throat> to leave in 2020 right i mean we are all just like that you know it's like almost like a write-off for a business like i'm just gonna do this in 2020 so it's gone i don't gotta think about it <laughs> like that's kind of what i've been on certain things but i think going back um you know you could take away linkedin tomorrow you know I've built my whole entire business around it. So yeah, it'd be a little devastating, but you could take away LinkedIn, you could take away Zoom tomorrow. And I could sit here in my room without the Zoom and without LinkedIn, and I could sit here and kind of just, and say, I still was able to make an impact on the world. Yeah, it might not be 100,000 people. Yeah, it might not be this, but to have the impact that I've been able to have at my age or just where I'm at as a business owner, I could die happy. And it sounds so crazy to say, but I never, have had a feeling like that you know and not that it matters like reinvention daily i had some some ideas around like doing sponsorships and trying to be creative and different and like people would have been like oh you know it, you failed like no nah, i moved to many people it sounds so crazy to say but i never have had a is there a delay I'm sorry I, I hurt myself for a second <laughs> um yeah those can go away and i i could be fine with the impact that I've been able to have on, on the globe virtual. And again, it could be a couple hundred people, it could be a couple thousand people, whatever that is, it's having that um, that's changed my life. It just means that I can do anything else in this world, leading with the expression, leading with who I am, and I can have that same impact, whatever it is that I do. So I think it's just, it's, it's leaving that in 20 for the purpose of like, when it happened, but it's taking that into 21, into 2025, into 2040. Like, you know, it's taking that forever and realizing that the experience that we create for others is also the experience that we create for ourselves. And no matter what that is. And I think that has been the theme overall, obviously reinvention, but also just realizing that you can make an impact, even if it's one person. And that's one of the most beautiful things that we can do and just to take that forever so if it makes sense but yeah leaving that in 2020 in the sense of like it happened here i will always look at 2020 as probably one of the greatest years of my life from a personal and professional standpoint i've grown more personally and professionally in nine months than i ever did in 28 years on this planet but now it's like you because you bridge the personal and professional kind of go together now it's kind mm -hmm. of you lead with that. So, yeah, impact. Totally makes sense. And probably your answer answers my question uh, as to why we gel on such a good level. Because the very first conversation which we had last week, uh, well, went over probably close to three hours. We decided we'd just meet for 30 minutes, but it was almost three hours. So, what really stands out for me is uh, the uh, statement you made, which is to improve the consciousness of one person at a time, which is my mission statement as well, to raise the consciousness of this world one person at a time. So if our post, if our content, if this talk show impacts just one person, then that is a great legacy for the three of us to be leaving behind and uh, just taking up um, all that positivity and the awareness which we created. Uh, I know Michelle and myself have had uh, longer discussions on this, but it really makes a great impact. And 
the feeling is really very empowering. So, Michelle, do you have any other thoughts or questions for Andrew uh, before we remove him from the offset? Yes, I have this question that's just burning. How is Andrew spending the holidays? Oh man, I'm actually going up to Sacramento, where we're originally from, spend time with grandparents, uh, leave on Sunday. We'll be up there a week. Very excited because it's the first time I've actually left since March. Get to actually see my grandparents. I'm so excited. Spend time with family. Um, and I know times are still difficult and interesting, um, especially out here in California with the population and, and all the stuff we have going on out here. But I will be up in good old Rockland, California. Um, yeah, and just hanging out, playing a little golf, uh, having good times with family and um, some close friends. So I think that's what it's all about. No matter what happens, uh, we take this time to just be together. I think, you know, we had that same thing a couple of weeks ago with Thanksgiving and it's different. The landscape is different. The feeling is different, but not the feeling of being together with family. And uh, I, th I don't think you can ever change that the pandemic or whatever the hell happens. Like you can't change what happens with what you do with your family and your friends. So it's just, I'm glad to have that in person. Um, even if it's just for five or six days, you know, and I, it goes a little, you know, it's just, it's embracing that and having that. So that's my holiday. Nothing super extravagant, but extravagant in the feeling and the way that I get to be with, with my family. So yeah, it's, I'm excited. Very excited. Yeah, that's absolutely awesome. wonderful. So um, before we end the show, any questions from you, Andrew, to ask about, or do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to share with our audience? If anything, um, again, with the, the world out there, don't be afraid to press play. Um, we have, you know, our anxieties, we have our doubts. Oh, what I'm going to say is not going to be good. It'll take it from me of oh, just pushing play back on April 22nd. You know, you could look at the background and the lighting and I was all close and I didn't have the, 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 the tinkering that I've done now, but don't be afraid to press play. Because again, looking back and just pressing play, you know, almost 10 months ago, it's transformed who I am. It's transformed Elevated Shorts. I mean, again, just to shout out Mary, like to have her take reinvention daily and do the same thing in Europe is, has been one of the most impactful things. Because again, that was me pressing play saying, whoa, well, this is going to go somewhere, I guess, <laughs> or maybe not. Look where it's gotten. Look where it's gotten even beyond Mary. Like look where it's gotten to have these conversations. So I, I attribute everything to simply just me pressing play and putting that message out there. Anybody can do the same thing, you know. I, again, I I'm just a, another normal kid from a broken home, you know, from a small town in Northern California. But I just want to prove to everybody that like they can do it too, and they can press play and just put themselves out there. So again, to move people across the planet from my home studio, um, I guess I, I can't go too far on it because I will get emotional about it because it's <laughs> moving on such a level. But I, if there's any advice from the age old 28 year old in this world right now, it's just express. Don't be afraid to press play, share, don't compare because people will listen. People will pay attention, people will listen and people will understand. So press play. Awesome. Michelle, closing thoughts from you? I know. I think that's a great way to end it. Um, press play. Yeah. I think we've all gotten a lot farther by doing that. So awesome advice. Absolutely. So just be yourself. Own what you really want to achieve. Set intentions. Draft your goals. And persevere. That is all we can say from our experiences, resilience, patience and perseverance have got us where we are today. Uh, probably 10 months ago, we were still having that doubt. Uh, but what really helped is to talk with people, to talk to your friends, your community, meet new people, share experiences. Just be open, learn, and that is it. Uh, that is all you can do. And 
it was really great uh, talking to you, Andrew, and thanks for being our very first guest for this new talk show. I do know we have lots more to talk, and probably we will have you back along with uh, Mary and uh, your team uh, once again for the new year. So if at all you need more inspiration, please do visit Andrew's profile, connect with him, have a chat with him. He will be more than willing to just talk anything about life. And on that note, I wish you all a safe and happy holidays, a Merry Christmas. If at all we can make our next episode next Saturday, we'll be seeing you once again before we end 2020. Otherwise, I'd like to take this opportunity to wish you all a happy, healthy, prosperous 2021. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you all. It's been amazing. Thank you for pressing play and believing in yourselves in this show, and it means the world. So much love to you both, and uh, thank you again for your enthusiasm, your time, and trust in me, and just for pressing play and sharing. So beautiful. Yeah. All right. Thank you all.